everyone. Welcome to another Gadget Talk. I am so happy that you guys are here, and we are going to be doing another sci-fi inspired uh, cash, creative cash, gadget cash, and Chad's going to be doing the build on showing us step by step for how to create one of these caches. So how are you doing, Chad? Well, I think Chad's there. I see hands on another camera, but he has paused out on us. Oh, hold on. Here we go. We're going to bring him in. Hey, look, there's two... Two sets of chads. We're going to remove them. The other one. All right. Let me. I want to go minimize one of my screens and I shut this one. Oh, okay. So, all right. So, how are you doing tonight, Chad? Good. How about you, Derek? Doing great. Huh. Doing good. Had a big trip this last weekend. Went to Texas. Did some great caches. Got to get some Roma Cat caches. And so that was really fun. And doing some other ones. And those videos will be coming out in the next few weeks on my channel. But those, it was just a lot of fun, uh, busy, getting to see the DNF Avenger and a whole bunch of other stuff, and just, it was a great time. What's going on on over there on your coast? Uh, nothing, snow, snow and rain. Just snow and rain. <laughs> snow and rain, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> nothing so. nothing fun over here. I didn't have a chance to find any Roomba Good Cats caches, so. Um, they were Someday. really good. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything. That That'll be... Not this week's video, but next week's video. So that'll be from my channel, Behind the Cash. But don't want to spoil that for you guys. So, But they're really good, and there's going to be a lot more coming out to that trail there as well. So I'm um, kind of looking through here, looking at the chat real quick. Yeah. So we got Minimax says, hi, happy new year. Yes, happy new year, everybody. Uh, Darren from Australia, good morning, y'all. Try Cash, this is on. Uh, just finding a way. Super, I'll see you at via... Uh, geocaching later um uh, geoca note of geo okay so just everybody's joining in and just really appreciate everybody being here uh, but before we get to doing too much of course we need to go ahead and take care of our sponsors and then we have something else that is a surprise for you one moment if you have not become a patron of the geocache talk network what are you waiting for patron levels start as low as a bison tube level at three dollars a month to sign up is easy. Simply go to the Geocache Talk website and click on the Become a Patron button or go to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk. Patrons now get the famous blackout coin, invites to special events, and other really great items throughout the year. Become a patron today. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right in the rain paper. The logbook's designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who'd rather go caching than doing cache maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. That's L O G W E R K.com. Have you subscribed to FTF Magazine yet? FTF Magazine is the number one geocaching magazine available. It is a quarterly magazine that you can be part of. Submit your geocaching milestones and adventures to be published. FTF Magazine is also interactive with puzzles to solve and the hunt to find Spartacus. If you can solve the puzzle or find Spartacus, then you will be entered in to win a special path tag. Every new subscription, you will receive a special swag pack. Subscribing is easy. Just visit FTF's website, ftfgeo.com. Don't miss out and subscribe today. All right, so... Before we even get to you building your stuff, Chad, we have something special that we got to do tonight. And I actually get to play on our show this bump. Hold on. Here we yeah. go. And I've had to bring in Gary because Gary has a special announcement for us tonight. So how are you doing, Gary? Great. Can you hear me okay? Yep. I got you good. Good and clear. So let me go yeah. ahead and solo you out so you can make this very special announcement. Or you can solo yourself. I don't care. <laughs> oh, you're good. No, you're good. Uh, yeah, so we've had some discussions about possible changes to the Geocache Talk Network. I think they're right. good changes, by the way. Not bad changes. They're good changes. No. I must be out And uh, we have made the decision that gadget talk will now be a permanent weekly show on tuesday nights at eight o'clock that's right so you are going to be stuck with chad and i every tuesday night <laughs> at eight o'clock for gadget talk so yeah we're stepping it up we're going to be doing a lot of different stuff from more builds to having guests more guests on and stuff 
So we're just, we've been kind of talking about this for a while. Um, so now, did yeah. you want to make the rest of that or do you want to wait till Sunday uh, for the other part? I think I'll spill beans on Sunday about other things, but okay. we're, we're very excited. Uh, this was uh, a really good decision. Really, uh, Gadget Talk kind of came forward and said, we're, we can do it because that was the big thing was, uh, you know, you guys okay with a weekly show? It's like, it's a lot of shows, but it's a lot of shows, uh, but Hey, but, but yeah, yeah, y'all have done, y'all have done tremendous. You know, one of the, the best, you know, they're all great shows on the network, but gadget talk is, you know, as an anchor of geocache talk network. And this was uh, I think a, a good decision for you guys to take on, you know, uh, a lot of, We've had a lot of great shows already from Gadget yeah. Talk, but looking forward to a lot of a lot of great more shows coming up. A lot of uh, new stuff, a lot of guests, a lot of different things that will be done in this space. But this is now uh, the permanent spot for Gadget Talk, and we'll talk about other things on Sunday. So stay tuned for that right. on Sunday. Right, and everybody in the chat seems like they're really excited about it, and that that. That makes me feel good um, yeah. because Chad and I have talked about this and what, some of the stuff that we want to do, we don't want to just do, I mean, it's gadget talk, but also a lot of people have been asking about techniques and different yes. aspects of things doing. So that's, that's more of some of the stuff that we're going to go into. So not every week we may not be creating an actual cache, but maybe showing you how to do something to make a cache. So right. if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I think it really does lend itself. Uh, Roomba Cats is a really good example of some of your of some great shows where you talk about technique of doing a of doing a cache and not just doesn't have to be necessarily a gadget. Uh, creative caches kind of fall into this category too, or right. hidden caches um, in different ways. So, like you said, there's kind of just some different things that you guys can do here that really lend itself to the Gadget Talk show. Right. Pizza beans. Pizza beans. <laughs> no, not oh, that, that, I'm sorry. That doesn't even sound good. Pizza beans? Uh, it doesn't sound good to me. That sounds like what the bim, bean boozle thing. <laughs> but Pizza Ninja does say so many good things are happening. There are a lot of good yes. things happening. So. Yeah. So this is. All right. This let's is let really you guys good. get on with your show. Really looking forward to it. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for uh, becoming the Tuesday anchor. So. I'll take thank you. Take it away. It'll be fun. All yeah. right. Thanks, Gary. We'll talk to you later. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah. So this is going to allow us to get into more detail. Like last week, we started with how to make a, a you know sci-fi cache. Um, this week, we're actually going to talk about how to. It's part two, so we're going to talk about making a sci-fi cache from scratch. So last week, we made one using some already pre-made containers. Tonight, we're going right. to show you how to make them without from scratch, no containers. You make your own. Uh, and then next week, we'll talk about weathering the cache, maybe some painting, some weathering, decal, stuff like that. Uh, right. And then that should follow up into um, pretty close to our build where we'll have people on. Yeah, that build challenge. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. So this is going to be fun. So we'll actually be able to take more time on each uh, thing we're building and actually go into it more. We're going to kind of get into it a little bit more tonight, but we'll be more detailed later on cutting and, and making things uh, rather than just worrying about Hey, we got to, you know, get into it, get it all done in an hour for this month. So, right. It'll be good. Yeah. We'll take that. It's kind of like, like a regular TV season. The movie, yeah, the movie is two hours long, but if any of you do go like and watch the Mandalorian or something like that, you're getting like eight hours <laughs> of, of story versus just two hour story, all that crammed into it. Cause I mean, I do a lot of books and uh, books on audio and those books are 18 20 hours and they cram all those down in two hours if that mm -hmm. long so yeah so this is what we're, we're able to like, kind of expand this and be able to spend a little bit more time on some stuff and say hey you know this is where we're at on this week we'll join join us back next week for part two part three or whatever where we're at so yeah yeah it'll be fun i'll, I'll be excited chronically so tired tired moms. Moms weathering yeah. is one that i struggle with Ugh. so yeah me so too that, I've shown Derek some of my mistakes and I want to redo it on, uh, on one of my caches. So, yeah. Um, so, and it's, yeah. And I don't want, yeah, we're, there's, we've talked about stuff and I don't know what, what you want to reveal on different aspects. Yeah. Of things, well, but. it doesn't matter. We can talk about it a little bit later. 
Um, let's okay. get into because we had the same idea for one of the catches that you were talking about last week, and we talked about this. Week. Let's like, talk about it real quick. Let's just talk about it. So this okay. was funny. So last episode, someone said, "Hey, that looks like a Derek." You said that looks like I, a screen, yeah, it was me. It was me. Yeah, one of those screen bottle deals, and so I said, "Yeah, it actually kind of does." So this weekend, I go, "Oh, I'm going to make one," and so I I made one and had it paint started painting it, and Derek sends me a message. What was it? You sent me a message on, oh, you should Sunday. make a screen cache. Yeah. And uh, laugh cache with Monster Zinc. Uh, uh, that, you yeah. actually, that opens you when you scream or laugh. And then it opens up. So uh, it's kind of funny. I sent pictures. And so I had this in the paint. So this is actually, if you see the scream or the Monster Zinc, this is what is on there. Um, and so what will happen is I don't have it programmed right now. I actually started working on the code is you'll end up having to yell so loud and then it will open up a container once you get the, once you get the right pitch, right? Or the right height. Uh, or loudness or whatever. Screen yeah. loudness, whatever you want to call it. Uh, still working on that part. But anyways, this weekend I printed this up, uh, made it up, started painting it. You can see the weathering. I absolutely hate the weathering on it. Um, <laughs> I think it looks so good. I though. want to redo it. Uh, well, you know what it is? It's one of those things when you, when you build something, you know, it's, yeah. you know, all the mistakes. In fact, the top, uh, so I did all the weathering, um, to the bottom and the middle, and I started spraying the top white, a uh, yellow, and I forgot to weather it, pre weather it with, um, the latex. And so I'm like, oh man. So anyway, so the top is not really weathered. I weathered it a little bit, um, as much as I could, but I don't like it as much. So Anyways, at some point it will go away. It's just um, a little scream bottle, nothing big yeah. on there. But uh, yeah, it anyways, looks really cool. At some point, I love it. Yeah, Mama Cat says knocked it out of park there. Of course, Gary says looks awesome. Um, I just, I really think that does look really good. I mean, it was now that is not the same canister that, that we were printing that you printed last week. No, yeah, that one's this is a little bit bigger, but this it's still three D printed, um, and it looks really cool. And that's on Thingiverse as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. Just Thingiverse for printing is just really, really great. Yeah, it was. And I was like, oh man, I really want to make one. And I, you know, sitting there watching TV and I'm like, Hey, I wonder what there's on Thingiverse if they have something. So looked it up and there was several of them. So I picked the one I liked the best. Um, I have more decals to go. The only <laughs> one I have is a max screen capacity on here. Um, still, um, but, uh, you know, a couple of different things on it, which, um, we can, well, we can go over it real quick that I like, I had a resin print versus 3d print. Um, the top right. knob is resin printed. Um, it's a lot nicer, a lot smoother and cleaner. And then also the, um, the, uh, light there, which looks like it went out. Um, I had that, <laughs> I've had that on all day, so I'm sure the battery is not, no. not too happy. Um, so I started 3D printing or resin, yeah, 3D printing with a clear PETG. And I just hate, hated it. It was not coming out how I wanted to, how I wanted yeah, it's very to. Very opaque. Yeah. Yes. And so I end up it says stuff on it. Uh resin printing a couple different ones. And they're so much nicer on there. And you could just sand the back of this to make it so it's not as Looks clear. Rougher. Right, exactly. So it's obscure, but the light will still go through. So, you know, I've, I've got the resin printer and I thought, oh, I'll never use it. Use it a few times. And now that <laughs> I have it, I told you I almost bought a bigger one because I'm like, oh, yeah, I know, I know. like a quarter inch bigger. So one of those those things, when I bought it, I really didn't plan on using it. I always know I need to buy the biggest one I can I can get. I can afford. Right. So, so come back with some comments. Hugh says... That looks all that, that looks great. Opens by how loud you yell. And that kind of leads into chronic tire. Is that supposed to be the scream cancer for Monsters Inc.? And yes, it is. So that's just something really great. Pizza Ninja says, feel free to send it, uh, mail it to me if you're yeah. if you don't like it. It looks awesome to me. Um, you're not the only one, Pizza Ninja. Yeah. And Raptor XE says, You're not happy? I can only wish mine came out like that. <laughs> so um yeah. Bell says, I love the idea of caches at event at an event screaming at a cash in can container all day, LOL. Yeah, it, it will. That's kind of funny because there's no stealth involved with that. one. 
<laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, where do you put it where <laughs> you wouldn't get someone's attention if you're yelling uh, on it? An event is great. I love doing stuff at events. Um, yeah. So I think that'd be a great place to put it. So uh, put it close to like oh, a well, baseball we'll park, like like by, by some sporting venue. So when people are yelling, so you, you can actually go there at a day of of the event and you like go 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 and just and just yelling your brain out, and it so it actually activates and people think you're cheering for the the event and you're trying to open up a cash. Yeah, maybe that's where you could put it. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Little league baseball field. So next week, uh, we'll go over on weathering, what I do to prep it, uh, all that stuff. So how you get the silver look, um, you know, and, and you, there's so many different ways you can do it, any color you want. So we'll go over that next week. Okay. So yeah, in the middle of woods, right, if, so let, if no one hears you, right, is, what is that saying? If the tree falls and no one's around, does it make a noise or something? Is that how it would right, be for screen? Right. right. GC uh, DX SK 11 says, what happens if you can't scream like me? Uh, then it becomes a teamwork cash. Air horn. Air horn. Bring somebody. Get out your yeah. car to honk the horn. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Perfect. Well, right. let's uh, get started on the containers. So all right, all right. the other um, room, you want to turn your screen off? Yeah. Let me do this. <laughs> that way we can add this side. <laughs> All right. So Chad's going to be joining us in the, his other room. He walks from one side to the next. And it, it, the way, he, way Chad has this set up is just really cool. And I know you, we only see this little bit, um, but his shop is really cool. This used to be his um, movie theater, and now it's his workshop in his house. So really super cool. And, oh, I need to add you back in because your microphone was off on that one. You, I'll just, okay. yeah. We'll just go this me? way. I got you. I, I yeah. When you closed okay. out the whole thing, I lost your microphone. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So uh, let's look at the caches first, and then I'll talk about how I built them. Um, okay. So when I first started building some of these caches, um, sorry, my screen's over there, so I don't know what you're, <laughs> what I'm looking at. Um, the uh, I didn't have a CNC machine. I didn't have a laser cutter. Um, I had a simple table saw, router, and chop saw is all I used. Uh, Which I think and this so is that, great because a lot of people don't. I don't. Yeah. So this will be a good one. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I wanted to make something space sci-fi-ish type of thing. Um, and so this is how I ended up making it. So let me show you one. This is the pizza box that I took down to HQ um, here. Uh for the when Joshua had the uh, the HQ, uh, I thing. heard HQ, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I heard HQ thing. So him and I talked. I made this. We took it down there. Um, it's a donut box, is what it was. It's the only thing I've ever used it for. Um, there's a door here that you can't get into um, on this side, uh, and then there you turn it on, and there is a puzzle on this side. Um, and these flash. There's numbers. There's uh, segment display all that stuff um i actually was like i wonder if it works i haven't even took the battery out of it and so it takes a 12 volt battery i don't have time to charge it but uh anyways um it on the inside of it here there's a, a led light that flashes um it does a lot of fun stuff but anyway it's it's pretty basic um like i said i had a table saw a uh chop saw and a router is all i used to make this some glue and some um uh clamps so i'll show you how to do it now this is just the way i thought about making it there's all different ways you can make it i'm sure someone's like oh well i would probably you know make it a little bit different if you if you would just if you have ideas uh put them yep. up there on the in the chat and Derek will put them in the bring chat them up. or you can also of course email us at gadget talk podcast at gmail.com or even just even tag us on instagram at gadget talk podcast as well so any of those ways you can get hold of us um, as Chad's bringing those up. So yeah, those, that's just really cool. Cause as I said a few minutes ago, that not everybody has a CNC machine or has a laser cutter. I don't, I have table saws, routers, and I just got a new hand router, got a, a new jigsaw. I have a scroll saw. I mean, I have a lot of saws and stuff, but this, this is really great. Cause this is some of the techniques that we were talking about 
not wanting to show people with any types of tools that you, what you can do and build. So we're going to go through some of the techniques and I'm hoping, I even am hoping to be learning some different techniques as well as we go through stuff. So this is what we're going to be doing. All right, Chad, you ready? Yes. Sorry. I just wanted to move yeah. my computer so I can actually <laughs> see <laughs> what screen I'm at. All right. That's good enough. Okay. So, um, First thing here is down at the table. <laughs> Sorry. Rumba Cat says, if you can make it through those puzzles, we'll still just better, better calorie free. <laughs> nice. Okay. So um, let's look down at the table here. The build cam. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I got to say this one too. The Pizza Ninja says, the Scream Cache could be located behind an ice cream stand and you can call it, call it Ice Cream. Well, you know, what really happens is, uh, Tricash just needs to make one. I mean, isn't uh, Monsters a Pixar thing, which is owned by Disney? So it kind of needs to go to a Disneyland type of place. Yeah, so Disneyland, yeah. You should put yeah, one in Disney. the middle of the woods. Yeah. Out there. So, but uh, yeah, um, any place that would take one, I think it'd be fun. I would actually have one at one of my stores if I had one, just to watch people scream and find the mm -hmm. cash. I think it'd be hilarious. I think it'd be funny. So, yeah. Okay, so... Um, what I started out with is, and these are a little bit different size than what I made the puzzle box out of. I actually literally, minutes before we went on the show, Derek's like, oh, you should uh, you should show how to make it, cut it and route it and stuff. So I was like, oh, okay. So I, I cut these up real quick. I got some scraps. So they're not the exact size, but they'll work. You'll get the idea. So right. I took pieces. So this is how I make my template. So I took pieces of scrap wood. This happens to be MDF. Um, you know, you could use whatever you want uh, on it. And so I cut them to the size they wanted the frame to be, um, which is this size. I don't know what it is because I just cut these real quick, but this is the size it is. Uh, you, whatever and then, size you want it to be. <laughs> yes, whatever size you want it to be. Um, and then what we're going to do, end up doing is gluing all the joints together here um, and clamping them. Uh, letting the glue dry and then we'll end up gluing in the corners. So I just made these again. I just cut them real fast. This is going to give us our, our little corner look here, like what we have here on this, on the box. Right. Okay. Um, which, you know, sci-fi things typically have like a 45 degree angle somewhere on them um, from the movies that I see. So most of the movies. Um, in fact, I think I was watching, uh, Battlestar Galactica, and you know their paper has those 45s on them. They're not square. It does. It does. I'm just, yeah, I'm just remembering yeah. that too. So anyway, we'll end up just gluing these, clamping these together, and letting it dry, and that will make our jig on that. So um, should we, well, we can glue it, I guess, and clamp it. Right. And with mu movie we can magic. fast forward version. Yeah, yeah we we'll can do, do the movie magic. Version. Yeah, we can so do that if we'll you do don't some, want to see we'll watch some Scooby, glue. Scooby Squiggles, and we'll have the other one ready. So. Yeah. So uh, you glue it together, and you get this is the exact template I have actually for the, the donut box cache. Um, and so, uh, and then I keep this, and you can use this over and over. Uh, and you'll see, I'll show you some templates here I've made that I keep and you can inter intermix them with lots of different caches or I even add them to a cache if you want to. Uh, even the cutouts, you could reuse the cutouts if you need to. Um, so this here now is the top of the, or this is the side of the box. Um, what I did here to actually attach it to the wood to route it. So what I'm gonna use this, this is a template and I'm gonna use the router to route this out. Um, right. I drilled some holes here in the corners here, and this okay. is actually what I used to mount anyway. So I had to figure out where I wanted to mount the panels together, and I actually ended up using those holes anyway. So I'm actually not uh, going to waste anything or, or ruin the look of it with those holes. Okay. So you'll just have That's to good. kind of figure out how you're going to mount it. Um, so we'll take – I did a quick rough cut of a board here. And well, what, uh, what kind of wood are you using? Just I know it's, it's just scrap, but uh, I'm just using some use? MDF on here. MDF. Uh, my boxes are made out of PVC or not PVC, uh, uh, plexiglass. Um, but uh, you can make it out of PVC, you can make it out of whatever you want. I mean, Rick does 
in Colorado does his caches out of the uh, press board, the particle board, and just treats right. them, puts a finish on them, and they sit for years out there, and, and they look brand new. So um, yeah. use whatever you want. You can use a, a MDO, anything you, you like to use, you know, go ahead and use it. So um, what we'll do is go ahead and screw this down to this, and then we'll throw it on the router table and route it out. Um, a fun live thing here to do. So let me grab my say drill. Hello and to Houston, Texas, Dave. Uh, he's on there. Uh, Rumbacast is saying, I have a cache like that. It has tons of items with numbers like receipts, movie tickets, key chains, et cetera. Look through the window to find numbers to open the cache. Uh, like to find, find, uh, like a find it game. That's really cool. That's a really great idea to yeah. do with that as well. Uh, I really do like that. Um, such a great, really cool way. Maybe you have the window, um, maybe use a, a UV light and you got to find something in there through that way as well. So just a lot of different ideas that you can do how to make a window into a cache. Um, so this would be a really cool, cool way of doing this. And uh, like I said, chat's going to be showing us a really neat way of being able to do these route, an easy, simple way to be able to do this router. And Chad, you're using, you're going to be using the table router tonight. Am I correct? Or are you going to be using the hand router? No, I used a hand router when I made mine. Um, but I'm going to use a table router just because it's going to be a little bit quicker and easier. Um, okay. but you can use a hand router just as easy, um, with this. It's just, you pretty much put it the opposite way. Right. So. And so Chad's going to be used, uh, there is a special bit that you will need to have on this one. And it depends if you're using a table router or a hand router. It's the, it's where the, or actually how are you going to do it? It has a, I don't have one right here with me, but it has a little wheel on the top of the bit itself. So you put that wheel on the wood that of your template and you just roll that along and it'll actually cut that in that shape um, really, really easily and without cutting the other board. It's just, so just, it's a, like a flush and it just kind of cuts as it goes through. So um, I have one for my, my router table, which is right there on my here. And then I, I also have one for, I can put it on a hand router. So one of them has the wheel on the top of it and the other one has the wheel back toward the shank, and that just helps helps it be able to go along that route. Great. Sorry here. Nope. So what we're seeing is Chad is drilling in, putting the screws into the template yeah. itself. So it locks it in place so you don't get that slippage as it's doing the route itself. Right. It's going to hold it in one space. So uh, one of my problems is I didn't, I couldn't find any at the last minute, three quarter inch screws. So oh. I'm making my inch and a quarter, three quarter inch. <laughs> and how so. are you doing that? Just for somebody to, that, that's how, oh, what, what tool you want to do this? Uh, so I'm using some inch and a half screws, wood screws. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just taking some linesman's flyers and I'm just cutting them down. So I pre-drilled okay. the hole so it already has started. And then I'm just going to cut it down. Or snip, snip it off and uh, put it in there, and it will be done. I know I have a bunch of the screws somewhere, but literally this was minutes before the show, uh, and so I didn't have a ton of time. So anyway, um, so we're all screwed on here. We're nice and tight. What we're, we're going to okay. do is go ahead and drill a hole in here so we can okay. route the inside out as well, and then we'll route the outside out at the same time, and we'll be good to go. So let me grab a drill bit for that real quick. All right. Um, so Houston Davis uh, had a, so Houston Davis says he had to watch part one earlier today. So I'm glad you got to watch that. I'm glad you spent the day with us today, virtually and now in person here on Gadget Talk tonight. And then Chronically Tired Mom says, I'm just in awe of all the gadget cash guys. Everyone is just so creative. And we really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. And uh, Rumba Cat says, Love those Milwaukee tools. I have them all. Crazy good tools. So, and I know Chad, you you're a big fan of Milwaukee tools. Um, I'm just happy with whatever tool I get and just learning how to use it from my uh, shopsmith. And over here, this corner here, there's some of my new tools from Christmas. Those are my Ryobi, some tools back there, my um, cordless tools that, so I can go and do cache maintenance in the field a lot easier. I have a jigsaw and um, a hand router and some other stuff back there. So always looking at new tools and what's going to help to be able to do that cache maintenance 
So, all right, Chad, you ready? Yeah. Yep. So uh, I had to change batteries. Sorry. These these okay. twelve these M twelves are nice and light and small, but uh, they don't hold a lot of power. So all the everything I use for work is the bigger one. I actually have the bigger right. battery for this, but I have a cordless soldering gun uh, in my work vehicle, and so I keep the battery in there for that. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, and the cordless soldering gun's great for cash maintenance. Right. So. As Chad is, I'm gonna mute you just for a second. As Chad's doing drilling the hole in there, of course he's not drilling it right on top of the table because he doesn't want to put a hole in his table. So um, as he's drilling that, that's why I'm not really on that shot. But you can kind of see, you don't really see the being drilled. Um, so that's what's going on there. Once again, we really do stress on cash maintenance and having a good tool. These good tools is really important if you're doing any type of building or cash maintenance and being able to get out there and do this um, really is really important. And if you don't, and but what I'm loving about this tonight is that we're not using the CNC machine. We're not using the, all the really high tech tools. We're using tools that just about you can pick up anywhere. And most people have these different tools that we're using tonight. And if not, you can pick them up pretty cheaply. Uh, the, my Ryobi router that I have back there, I got the Ryobi router and the, um, what is it? The, not the jigsaw, that was a Christmas part, but the Ryobi hand, rout, hand router and the uh, rotary um, sander was just about $112, $115, somewhere around there. Plus then I had to buy the batteries. So not as um, expensive as what you might think. And it's just really great ways. I know Bell, Bell on the Move uses, um, um, well, he was talking about his cricket software, but uh, uses a jigsaw to build a lot of his cash. So, um, just kind of be on that aspect of it too. All right, Chad, you got your table ready? Uh, yeah, let's see if I can move this a bit. I don't know if you can see it on there. I can see it a uh, oh, you can bit. see it from there. Okay. Um, so I couldn't move this closer. My this is this is gonna be a mess anyways with all the dust. Well, oh, in fact, let me turn my dust collector on. Where am I? So Chad's turning a dust collector. Uh, okay. Uh, GCD says, uh, "Don't lose your fingers. Uh, safety first. So yeah, be safe. Yeah. Always oh. be safe when you're doing your working with your tools. Yeah, yeah. This is always the pressure doing it live. Something's going to happen. So anyway, so uh, anyways, I'll cut it. Derek will probably mute me. It's going to be loud. So um, okay. you're going to yep. see. I'm going to go through. I'll do the outside, and then I'll do the inside. All right. Good man. As you see, as you can see, as it's going across, that wheel on top of it is actually keeping it nice and flush, so it's not actually cutting into the top. It's just rolling right along it, and just getting that really nice right there. And Chas is rolling it along right around the outside of it of his table router, and it's just really um, doing this. Sorry, Houston Day, that's that's not really funny, but it kind of is. Uh, Signal has no thumb, so are you telling me that he is a gadget builder that's not really good at building gadgets? I don't know. Um, so, and then Hugh is saying, thanks for building this cache with common tools we can pick up. Important for us beginners. Yes, and that's what one of the things, like I said, with this new format that we're going to be doing, uh, we want to be able to go into a lot more of this. So Chad is coming along his last side of this routing right now and as you can see there is just dust and sawdust going everywhere um so this this is always can run havoc on our computers and everything on here so all right so that's all routed out around the outside and he's just finishing it off nice and smooth but that's what that wheel on that top of that bit does it just really helps makes that really even so and now chad's going to come on onto the inside and once again, it's just going to kind of route that section out. And as you can see, it just really nicely rolls along that template, making it really nice and smooth and really well done. I mean, we saw earlier how to make that template as just with straight pieces of wood and doing a 45 using a chop saw. All that was done on that, doing the chop saw. So really easily to do that. And, and, and I don't know. We'll ask. Have to ask here in a second, um, Rama Cats. But uh, um, 
Doug's asking, is Chad making a bull nose edge on the outside? So we'll, I'll ask him just in a second uh, when I can unmute him as I'm waiting for the router to be off. And it's off. So, all right, Chad. So Roma Cats wants to know, um, are you going to make a bull nose edge on the outside? So you can. I have on mine. So you could either – there's lots of different ones you could do. Sorry, it's a little dusty in here. Um, <laughs> a little? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you can do, uh, uh, whatever you want, 45, a bull nose, uh, anything you want. Um, I have lots of different bits, um, for router, for routering. Um, yeah, that's a mistake doing that without a dust collector on it. <laughs> um, so you can do a round over a bull nose edge with one of these. Okay. It has the bearing on it. Um, you can do 45s. There's all kinds. Um, right. This is like a 45. Um, I have all kinds of bits to use. Um, you can do even a 22 and a half. So if you actually wanted to make um, something that wasn't a 45 uh, and actually have multiple sides, you can do a, a 22 and a half inch um, angle on it and actually uh, glue the pieces together. Oh, cool. Um, but anyways, there's there's lots of different types of corners you know whatever you want i like i said i, I think a lot of sci-fi stuff is uh you know square and triangles and so i stuck with just doing a 45 on mine and i did that after i put it all together and then i just went around and did the 45 and that way it all matched it all matched <clears throat> right now how clean did that come out because of the with it being a round bit did it actually make the, the corner or is it kind of rounded still there in the inside? Yeah, so it is a half inch round bit. So the, the smaller you go, the more square your corners will be. Um, I don't want them to be exactly square. And so I went with the half inch bit. Uh, and so here, I'll take it apart and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay. Here now. So a uh, chronically tired mom is saying, um, I always thought a labyrinth themed cache from the 80s uh, movie would be cool, would be great. That actually sounds really cool. I like that. I like that idea, kind of that theme. Um, that's really cool. And Roma Cat says, oh, oh, right, a 45-degree bevel. Cool. Way more high-tech. So, yeah, just th really, believe it or not, it doesn't take much to make something look really cool. Add a little, and I think if you just add silver to it, it's going to already look high-tech at that point. Add, oh, yeah. Some chroming, chroming on it or anything like that just will make it look really high-tech on there sorry and there's chad cleaning the lens <laughs> it's dusty so uh yeah, i can see it all over your your uh pullover too i mean it's yeah it's, and it's honestly funny. when you're when you cut with mdf you should wear a mask mine's over at my paint booth um i should have put it on this stuff is actually bad at um i don't know if it still has arsenic in it um but it, it may so anyways it's always recommended that these dust particles are small enough which is why i have a a micro dust collector up here um, that will suck all the small stuff up into a filter, um, but not not this much. Um, but anyways, it's not good to breathe if you can prevent it. Um, so, anyways, you can see the corners. They turned out pretty good. They're pretty they're pretty uh, cornered. You know, there's a roundness yeah. to them. No matter what you're gonna do, unless you're cutting on a laser, you're gonna have some kind of roundness. You can go with a eighth inch bit. Remember, the smaller the bit you go, the slower you have to go because the more pressure you're putting on it. You're heating that bit up and it could break right and you don't want a bit at 4,000 rpms coming off and heat you in the face or anywhere in the body so um no, you know, no, that, that take your time don't force it right you'll know by the fill of the router bit when you're feeding it if if it's going smooth so and remember um, the router bit you, when you're doing there's all the cameras right now the router when you're going along you need it goes in one direction if you go the opposite direction it's going to start skipping and so you always want to do that uh, Roma Cats says uh Sawdust is man glitter. I actually have a shirt that says that. Um, I got that last year for Christmas. And this year for my crazy woodworking shirt I got was, um, it says, I have enough tools, said no woodworker ever. So that's the shirt I got <laughs> this year. <laughs> I like it. You, uh, that's that's great. I love it. Um, yep. So as, as we're seeing Chad back here, he's actually grabbing a, his vacuum, his shop vacuum. Grab my vacuum. Probably. The next thing I want to show is covered in dust. So <laughs> he's gonna suck some of that up real quick. 
But as he does that, I'm going to mute him for a minute. So, Mama Cats, thanks. I think that is a really great way of being able to do that. And I, I love the way that edging looked as he was going through that. Um, really easy. And like I said, anybody could do this. You don't have to have a table. You don't have to have a table router. Remember, it's, just, it's the same technique if you have a hand router as well. You put that template on there. You have the, the wheel, and you just kind of roll it across at the same time, and it'll do the same thing. You may have to go a little bit slower because of hand routers sometimes aren't as powerful. Or if you have just a regular router that maybe um, I have my – my Bosch is underneath my 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 table router here, but if you have one that, another hand router has where you have con control of the hands of it, you'll be able to do it that way as well. And maybe what you need to do is when you're doing that, uh, there's a underneath your template. If you're having to do that, you can get what's called uh, bench cookies, and these are some really simple bench cookies that you get if you're doing some routing or standing or anything like that under there. And you just set this um, on your bench. And you put your, um, it gets it up off the bench just a little bit. So you're not going to be routing into your bench. And these do not slide. I mean, they, once even on the bench, they will keep your material on there and keep it from sliding. So this is another option that you can do as well if you just need some space on that. So those are something that you can use when you're doing routing or anything like that. So, um, all right. I think Chad is just about done. He's still, he's still sucking up some more of this uh, sawdust around the table router. All right. All right, okay. Dad, you're back. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, I'll just back here. All right, so on to the next one. So that one there is, is simple. And then to make the, ed, the end pieces, all you do is when you put it together, you measure it and you cut the end pieces. You can you can do whatever you want. On this one here, I, I made the door in three pieces. I, I made, I cut the sides I needed. Can't see Sorry. which one you're pointing at. Not that I one. See that yeah, not that one. Yeah, there we in go. My, in my view, I can see it just fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm looking through a camera. I can't see it. <laughs> yeah. So I cut this in one piece, and then I ripped this in a table saw where I wanted them, and that's going to give me my gap I want um, for the hinge and also for the door to close. Uh, again, you can you can make it whatever size you want. And, th and this side here is solid on here. And what I ended up doing was putting a space in between here. So there's actually a one inch space in between here that has all the electronics for the cache in it. So you can't see okay. electronics on this side and you can't see them on this side, but they're in there. There's a small space for them there. So anyway, so glue them together, um, screw them together, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then, you know, have fun with it. Uh, the panels don't have to be clear either. You can do a dark panel, light panel, paint them, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, with those it's it's up to you to your creativeness right uh roma cat so is saying next... also a, is saying a plunge router is very useful it allows you to the hand router to plunge the cutter bit down into the wood to make more pre uh, precise precision cuts yes very true uh my my tail router my router that's mounted there actually has a plunge router as well so if i wanted to use it i could take all that apart and use it um but that's just another way of doing it too. So yeah, that's very good point. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. All right. Okay. So uh, the next one I'm going to show here is, is one uh, that I actually did make on the CNC, but it's kind of give me an example of what I save and how I make the templates. So every time I cut one of these out, um, either on the CNC or with a router, um, I save all the extra parts. Um, because you'll never know when you're going to need them or use them, and they make great templates for the future. Um, and so I always save them, and I'll show here. So this is a piece here I cut out. It's acrylic. Like right. I said, I do a lot in acrylic, and then I, I paint it. Um, it actually has, like what Doug was asking, right? It has the 45-degree bevel on it. It's not sanded or oh, anything cool. on that. Yeah. But um, anyway, uh, so I, I save a lot of pieces. I could use in the future or use as a template. So here's another one that I've used as a template um, for another project um, that I can use. Um, and then same with these. If you don't want to use it as a template, you can actually mount these to a flat piece and actually have that detail of it sticking out, right? You give yeah, it adds that, that detail, adds that, yeah, that adds that texture to it. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. The other thing I like with these is if I don't know what I want the design to look like, um, I make these panels here 
out of uh, uh, styrofoam board, um, craft board, to, you know, with the styrofoam in between. And then I can actually just pre-make what I want and what I'm thinking. I can use these as templates and, and set it up and be like, okay, I like that. And so it gives me my pre kind of what I'm looking for. So like this here um, is exactly what you see here. So I have a cutout here. Here's the screen. Um, this here is a slot for the wires for the keypad. Uh, and then right. this part here is where I have the on and off switch, the arm switch. Um, but, you know, you can do this. This one here is for a card reader. So you have a red and green LED and your card reader goes there. It's not a, it's it's not a, a smiley face. face or a frown. For sure. It's a frown <laughs> face. It looks like one. <laughs> but so I save these uh, to actually use to kind of design what I'm thinking of um, before I make it. So and then there's smaller ones. There's all different size ones that I make. So um, it's actually fun to keep them. And then, you know, later on, if you're making other ones. Um, you can here go to my big screen here for a sec here, my shop. Okay. Um, All right. Later on, you see how much of a hoarder I am. Uh, you can get <laughs> these ones, and these are perfect doors. They're actually routed for plexiglass on the backside. Um, right. and these are just templates that I keep. Um, same with this one, just a different style. Uh, and then these are the interior parts of those doors that I cut out, um, which make great templates as well. So um, anyways, and they're all kind of sci-fi-ish type of cuts. So I keep all this stuff and I can use it in the future for the template uh, if I ever want to use it again. So it's actually really nice. Yeah, that is really um, so cool. Anyways, I like that. That's templates. So um, anyway, we'll move on to this cashier. So this is, is done the same type of way. Um, I did use a CNC on it and then I used a hand router to route the, the 45 around the corners of it here. Okay. I don't know if you're on the right screen, Dirt. Oh, sorry, wrong screen. Okay, there we go, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, so on, on the around the edges, I did a 45 uh, around here. So um, anyway, and then, you know, we were talking about handles. Um, kitchen handles. That's what I put on here and it holds it. Now I have green tape on here because as I'm putting it together, I'm just trying to decide how I want it to sit. Um, on the edge, I got to think about how the edge is going to be mounted. Uh, and so these end pieces here, and I'll pop it out real quick. Um, I had to figure out my size and how am I going to mount a panel on there and make it look really clean. And so what I ended up doing was making one with holes in it that I'll actually add threads to uh, that the end panel will actually screw to uh, and give it a nice saw. And so, th and then this part here will actually get glued to the box itself and won't come apart. You'll take this end panel off um, and that will be the way you access the cache or to do maintenance on it. So um, it's kind of fun. This is, this is one that I, a puzzle I started making a while ago. So this is the top. Um, this is one side here with doors. Um, this is the other side over here. Is, quarter inch, um, is that quarter inch or is those LED, are those of the LEDs that you're talking about with the little silver last week? Yeah, the these are. So yeah, remember how we were talking about LEDs with this with the uh, the mounts? That's exactly what these are. So they're in the chrome mount. The LEDs are a five millimeter okay. in the LED. Um, I can actually turn them on here. Um, so that's cool because I know we were talking about those last week with the LEDs, and when you flipped it over, they look a lot like quarter-inch plugs as well. So yeah, that's how I didn't know if that's what that was or. So, so yeah, Roman Katz is saying, um, going back on here is uh, templates allow great repeatability to make several of the same caches. Yeah, because and I know Doug's really good Roman about making that. Yeah. does multiple caches, which is, I think is such a great idea. And then um, another show idea, and I've already marked this one, Chad, hinge installation uh, trip tips and tricks would make a great gadget talk as well. So that's something that we might want to look at. We as well. that down, yeah. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thanks, Doug, for that one too. Any ideas you have helps because it, it's hard sometimes to come up with subjects and we don't know what you want to you know, know. Um, or, you know, may want some more information on, uh, as right. well as us. And I mean, there's so many ways to do stuff. 
Right. And with us being a weekly show now, there's things, if you want to see, build, build something specific or anything like that, let us know. Um, if there's some tips and different things like that, we're always looking for different things, always looking for ideas. So if there is something you want to see built, like putting hinges on, because those putting hinges on can be tricky sometimes. Um, if there's different tools that you can get, and if there is something that you would like to see, you can email us at gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com or also tag us on Instagram at Gadget Talk Podcast. Um, any of those ways, you be able to reach out to us and we'll be able to be able to do that. I think the best way would be the Gadget Talk Podcast at gmail.com. Just email us, both Chad and I get that email. So that'll be really helpful. Um, so yeah, we're always looking for different ideas. And like I said, for a weekly show now, we kind of need, well, that, that'd be great. And so, all right, Chad. Yeah, perfect. Um, so this cache is kind of fun. Um, I think you've seen this puzzle before. I've shown it uh, many times, but this is the LEDs inside those holders, those chrome holders. Um, there are several different color ones. Um, and then the puzzle to open up the cat, uh, the door, one part of the door. So it's going to have several different drawers, several different puzzles on it. Um, is you, you have to follow the, uh, um, you have to figure out the, the cash puzzle on it. And I think I've got it here. Let's see if I'm smart enough. Well, I know you got it there at the beginning. So, um, GCD SK11 asks, does the plexiglass ever break? Uh, I think if you would drop it, it would. Right. And then Trish uh, S uh, TWH Rider says, where are the best locations to place caches like these? I would think these are more like this. this the cache that you're looking at right now is more like an event cache. So you take this with you at, as an event. At an event, it could be as an a, an adventure lab um, or a lab cache, I should say that aspect of it. Um, so that would be, that's where you could possibly put some of these. If you have a, a library, you could put one of these into a library maybe um, that you could do inside of a library. That might be another option that you can do with that. Sorry. I don't, it's been a long time since I made this. I'm trying to remember. Well, how I know. Did. And, I, and you opened it at the before we came on because I saw you because you were testing. Yeah, does the door you work? <laughs> well, maybe you need to count the uh, LEDs in the front. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So the door opened. Not, not a ton of power behind it. Uh, but, uh, okay. yeah, it's one of those things that takes yeah, multiple fingers to, to access the and so this will be one part of the cache. Anyway, uh, there's another spot for another door. I built this, what, two years ago? And then I put it up on the shelf and started building it and moved on. So one of those things that you I started and then I got to think about different ideas, different puzzles, got to be happy with it. And I'll get back to it right. eventually uh, when I, I'm really sold on how it needs to end. And I actually think I have it in my head on how I want to finish it. I just need to, to finish it now. Put me in lazy. Right. Right. So, um, so that is uh, that part. Was there anything else on these we're talking about? Here's my chat. Let me go to the other room here. All right. We're going to go. Chad is heading to the other room. So I'm going to remove some of this other stuff in here for a minute. So. Once again, this like what we tonight we're going over more of just different techniques and be able to do different stuff, different aspects of being able to show a build from doing a router. And we're trying to try and use some more um, tools that just about everybody has. They're really easy tools to get because, like I said before, not everybody like Chad has the CNC machine, the laser cutter. Um, many of us do have 3D printers, so we can spend a little bit more time on that sometimes. And different aspects of it, but this is just showing you some techniques that you could be able to do with the um, the hand router or even a table router, really easy, and, and all making templates and just some different techniques that and things that you could add to a cache to make it more sci-fi or even just a lot more fun and different techniques that you can do. Um, Ramakat says, um, "Oh, he's Ramakat is just feeding us ideas for shows." Chad, I mean, this is great. I'm gonna have to go back through the chats and write everything down here a little bit. So the show showing. Other cache builders using door 
or drawer release ideas from mechanical to electronic methods. That sounds like a great challenge one for a month. That that that's what it sa that sounds like to me. Um, that would be good. We now we had Tricashus on um, showing his drawer release system, um, right. which was amazing. Um, right, using the CD drawer. Using the CD drawer. I mean that it's such a good thought because the the having to build the drawer itself and the sliding mechanism, you don't have to do that. It's already pre done. Um, you right. just need to mount the thing and hook up the power. Um, so I, I really think the one he did is ingenious. Um, I saw the cash, uh, was it Joshua did one where he had it in one of the little Pelican cases and it went in and out and he had the little caps you took off. I think that is an amazing cash. So, right. Well, we really saw that like at it. Mingo and we saw that at Mingo itself in, in person too. Yeah. That was sitting on, yeah. that was sitting at your table. Yeah. I'm trying to find the one that someone I tried to find last week for him, but, uh, Anyway, any ideas you have on that, that would be great. We'd love to have you on at all. If you want to show anything, how to build anything, um, you know, this is really want to bring, you know, listeners in right. to the show. Hellmeister. And, and Hellmeister, Hellmeister did that one too. Oh, okay. Oh, that is who maybe it was. It was Hellmeister actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah who, who mentioned that. Showed that. Um, so, I was Bell, hoping to find Bell's also said, I would love to see a show on lessons learned and hard the hard way or cash building, hiding mistakes, you've uh, you would never do again. There's a shelf. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have several of that. Uh, <laughs> I have several of them that uh, would be that way. But uh, here is let me share this screen. I tried to do it last week, and my computer okay is not working. Um, is it not working again? No, it's working. I just I'm not as quick as you there at this stuff up. All right. Um, Tell me when you're ready for me to bring. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, there we go. So this is used in your CD ROM drawer drive, but you're making an uh, uh, actuator out of it. So you just take all your parts out of your CD ROM drive or drawer um, and the parts and you put it in here and it actually shows you how to program it and and, uh, and make it all work. And it has all the 3D printed parts. So if you have a 3D printer, um, you can actually print all the parts here to make it work. And so I actually, uh, as soon as I saw this, I thought of, and there's videos too. If you go to Thingiverse, they'll show you how it works. Um, they'll actually, and if it requires any code or anything, they'll have links typically on it uh, as well. But uh, as soon as I saw this, I thought of Chad right away. Um, I think that this is genius and I, I need to try one of these. This would be a really that cool like, option to I open up a lid. So if you're doing like a treasure chest or something, Right, this would be a really cool way um, to incorporate a, a simple CD-ROM drive. Right, that's typically garbage. You can buy, you know, well, I don't know about a CD-ROM, but like a VCR typically, or something you could buy cheap, or or maybe a DVD player. I think it uses the same type of thing. So, yeah, that's, anyways, that's, I, like I saw that. that. I really liked it. So, you know, now, if you have that, any ideas, that really good. Would that be something that you'd put into your screen cache behind you? Would that would that open up the lid? Or how are you thinking of opening that lid? I thought about using the mechanism, the trunk release, because it pops, and I want it to be a loud sound. Right. But, you know, if I was good at programming, you could actually have that linked with it uh, using a um, step motor. And the louder you scream, the more opens and goes up and down. So you'd have to scream so loud, too, to keep that scream to get into the cache, maybe. Um, if you know what I'm talking about. So instead of having an LED graph that goes up and down, the lid may go up and down or a door. Um, I'm not sure. Just a thought of it. Um, but originally I was just going to do a, a trunk latch or some kind of latch that just pops uh, okay. right away on mine. Anyway, uh, I should just build one of these and just see how it works. Yeah. I, I'm I'm going to look for that one. Send me the link for that one too. That That's something. Because I have a CD. <laughs> I have a CD one or two CD players up there. It looks like um, ready to happen. <laughs> oh man. So I, yeah. So uh, yeah, I would encourage anybody, if you're thinking of an idea, you know, there's no important reinventing the wheel. Sometimes go on a thing of um, There's all yeah. these different things. There's uh, so many different sites that have codes and, and plans and go on there and see people share stuff all the time. 
uh, and it right. makes it simple. I mean, just just like this, I didn't have to sit there and redesign it. I just downloaded it and, and printed it. So right. The it only thing I would say, easier. thing I would say about Thingiverse and and any of the where you're getting these free plans, remember somebody designed those. Don't go and sell their designs. Um, that's and that, just don't do that. I don't um, sell them. I will give you the link to them. Um, right. So you can download them, but yeah, I definitely I won't print something like this and sell it because it's not my design. Right, right. So, um, so try cash. Oh, wrong one. I have an old computer tower. I can't throw away now because <laughs> I want to tear the CD drawer out of out of it. Right, exactly. And then try cash. was saying I like rotary latches similar to car door latches. So that's another maybe latch you might be able to use. And a Ramba. Cats is just sitting here filling. I'm starring all these so we can go back later and do screenshots of all the question, all the uh, show ideas, Chad. So, yeah. Um, and Doug should come on and show us some of these, right? Yeah. We don't yeah, have to show that, Come on and show us. Doug's a very smart guy. When you look oh, at yeah, his yeah, cash, he he's a very smart guy. Yep. So, yep. Love to have come super, on. Had a lot of fun getting a lot of several of his caches this weekend down in Texas. That was a lot of fun. Um, next week's video, not this week. Uh, <laughs> starting that one too, Doug. They sent nostalgia caches that so. use things like Legos, toy safes, classic check uh, uh, board games, movie themes. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be doing a lot of different stuff this new year. As this is the first show this year for actually the Geocache Talk Network, and we are. If you missed the announcement earlier, or you just joined us. We are going to be weekly now on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock. Every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, gadget talk, and we're going to be doing a lot of different stuff. Like tonight, we are going through using, um, still sticking on the sci-fi theme. And I think are we pretty much keeping on the sci-fi theme this month, anyways? Sort of. This month, I mean, we're, the next month, I think. Um, well, the first week of next month is the challenge. Last week right. of the month. No, last week. Last, isn't it? Last week. Of, first last, week of, the last Tuesday of the month will be, will be do the will be the viewer challenge show. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember now that we're every week. I don't remember. So right. yes. Uh, and next week we're going to be talking about um, more on weathering and painting, how to paint caches, how to give them that weathered look. So that's what's going to be next week, and and. and Doug's is sitting here flooding the chat with ideas. Um, so just thanks, Doug. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of be, that's what we're going to be doing next week. Uh, once again, Tuesday at eight o'clock, we'll be coming back and we'll be doing the, the weathering of the caches, uh, what, how it's going to do. And Chad's going to explain that. Um, hey, Chad, once again, show the uh, scream, scream cancer back in the back. So oh, yeah. kind of the weathering. Yeah, the lights kind of, are, kind of what the we're doing next week. Yeah, the lights are so off, but weathering. Um, look at the weathering on it. It's, it's silver, not, like the, the tape yeah. thing and that aspect of it. So, like, um, it's been worn. It's, I think the uh, the machine clamps around here, so I was thinking, oh, there's probably going to be lots of wear and tear. Um, it's probably been dropped. Um, so that's kind of where my thought came from on adding um, scratches, uh, things like that, and uh, to the cache. Now, this I need to redo. I don't like the color of this. This is just the black. Um, uh, P, uh, PLA that I used. Um, so I'm going to actually go ahead and move this to a different, I'm going to recode it with something different, uh, than black. So I think it needs to be like a dark silver or something like that. Dark gray. Same at the top. This is just the color of the resin. Um, it's going to end up changing as well, but yeah, I just, you know, there's no science to really weathering, um, aging, whatever you want to call it, the caching weathering is technically the term. Uh, it's just kind of what you think and you got to kind of go, well, I think it would, you know, rub here quite a bit. And so right. that's where we're going to go ahead and start weathering it. So you're going to see the LEDs and, and much, <laughs> Go ahead. The LEDs uh, came back. Oh, uh, you know what it is, is so I just, I didn't do any perfect amount in here. So Hugh, Hugh asked, what, what type of container is that? Well, that is actually a 3d printed scream canister from monsters. Inc. Uh, in that Back in that's earlier cool. in the show, Chad and I were kind yeah. of discussing um, about that uh, because we both had the same idea this last weekend. But 
I was out of town. Chad was in town. He built it. Um, yeah. He beat me to it. Um, and, and <laughs> oops, there it is. It's that container is from Thingiverse. Yes, it is. You can find it on yes. Thingiverse on there as well. Email us at uh, podcast at gmail.com and we can send you the link if you're needing, wanting that link. Chad has it. He's got to send it to me too and then we can send out the link to those as well. It's a really good design. I really like it. There's several of them on there and it really was my favorite one. Uh, one thing, um, when we're, we'll talk about it next week. Well, you know what? We'll save it for weather next week. Yeah. So. yeah, we'll go into the more of that next week. Um, but I want to thank everybody for being here with us tonight. It's uh, been a lot of fun. I hope you got to see a lot of uh, new techniques uh, or learn something new. I, it's so easy to do the routing and everything uh, if you build your template. And just you don't need to have a lot of fancy tools to be able to make a really great cache. So just remember that. And that's what we're going to be kind of going more into. We're, we're going to keep... We will go back into smart caches, but we're going to try and do a variety more, more of a variety of different things. Have more guests coming on this year as well. Um, I'm already Rumblecats is already volunteering for some other stuff as well as I'm seeing in the chat. So look, really looking forward to having a lot of different builders on this year. Um, we've reached out to a couple, um, even overseas, trying to see if we can get them on as well. Uh, time changes, time difference is sometimes a little bit different. So we may have. Uh, maybe a pre-recorded segment that we lay back in or something there's, but we'll, we'll figure something out because we want to open this up to a lot of different builders as well. Um, so if you have um, an idea and you want to come on, make sure you send us an email. Um, even if it's not anything fancy, it doesn't have to right. be fancy. We've mentioned this before. My basic caches I hate because there's nothing to them. Get more favorite points than my high tech smart caches that I spent a ton of time on. Right. So I would love to, if you have an idea for one, if you built one, you want to show it off, show how to build it, please come on the show, send us an email. We'd love to see it. Right. So, and we thank you once again for joining us tonight and we will see you next week for weathering a cache. And that's not just like, Hey, Oh, it's raining outside. I'm going to weather going caching. No, no. We're talking about painting, making it look worn, doing that aspect of it, yes. making it look beat up making a brand new cash look old and beat up. That's what we're talking about next week. So, uh, but once again, thanks for joining us tonight. Cannot wait to see you next week here on gadget talk. And don't forget um, we have, we're back. The regular show is back this Sunday. Um, normal time, eight o'clock Sunday night. So you don't want to miss that. Gary and the crew will be back. And so we will see you next week here on gadget talk. Good night. Good night, everybody.